Hello and welcome back to Toledo Aquaponics. This is my day 34 update and I know it's going to be extremely hard to tell. I don't even think you're going to be able to see them on here even if I move the netting. But the little tilapia have actually gotten a lot bigger, like noticeably bigger from when I first got them. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see them right now. Um, so I do have, I'll get better pictures and I'll post those to my Twitter later. Um, but they've gotten to the point now that there's only like one or so maybe one or two that actually can even make it into the swirl filter. Um, the rest of them are stuck, so they're getting to the point now that they can't fit in there. Um, I came out here the other day and had like six of them in my swirl filter. What I think was happening was um, they were following the food up the slow, the, uh, my little slow pipe, and basically just kind of followed it along as it was getting moved around. Um, so, it, other than that, it's been pretty well. Um, this little fish mate uh, F14 has been working out really well. I just refilled it today. Um, I have no condensation or anything on the inside. The food stays completely dry. And I don't know if you can kind of see, but see how this one, look, there's still some food hanging off on that little ledge? That's which way this thing rotates. Uh, the actual little outer ring here rotates. Um, and that feeds it basically slowly over about two hours. So as it goes through the it'll slowly get dropped into the system and then they end up down there um, the other thing I did is I added a quick release um, to my airline just to make it a little bit easier this is actually just a uh, ball valve with this is actually a, a press fit to NPT and then an NPT to back to press fit um, unfortunately they were out of just the straight ball valves that were press fit on both sides so this is just what I had so I put in a little bit of PFT PFTE tape in here um, so that way I have a little press fit so I can just basically take this off so that I can take this whole thing off and take it inside weigh out all the food at my own little pace and then bring it out and put it back so it works out really well um, I'm actually really happy with it um, what I did over here in my fish tank and let me move the light is I took my little net and I'm just kind of chilling it there um, this is way too, too fine of a mesh to let the fish kind of get out of here and then I bought a little smaller net so that way I can go into like the swirl filter and go after him. Um, I do have, and I don't think you're gonna, he's going to come out to see, but I do have one fish hiding in here. Um, he may be in the swirl filter. Nope. I'm not seeing him. So I don't think he's going to come out and say hi, but um, he does, they do, and it's kind of hard to tell, but down in the bottom of that little barrel there, um, sometimes they like to hide in that tube. And if you tap on the tube, they actually stick their head out, and they'll actually come out. Um, when they do, and once I know that's where they are, I actually take my net, and I put it on the end of my drain to waste, and just crack this open. Um, it's a little bit of a, it's a risk. I could honestly kill my fish doing that, um, but that's kind of the best thing I got right now. So I try to crack it open, not as hard as I can, um, and that way they get moved around. Um, it does probably damage the fish a little bit, unfortunately. So I would try to avoid that as much as possible. But like I said, I came out here the one day, I think it was yesterday, and there were six in there. So I just cracked it up and found all of them and put them back into the tank real quick. And it works out pretty well. Um, the swirl filter is definitely doing its job. Um, right now, I mean, you only basically see the sand that's there. There is sand in the bottom of this, so not everything, but really some of the finite stuff gets in here. And that's actually for, oh, there he is. I don't know if, he's gonna, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see him. Nope, he poked his head away. Um, I'm going to actually use this as kind of like a mineralization tank. Um, what I'm going to try to do is build a system so that way the, the top water up here is moving quickly. So it, the, the system moves really, really quickly from uh, through the spoil filter and then out through here. And then the lower water is slowed down ex exponentially. So that way I have a little bit of mineralization that's going on here with uh, combined with the heavy oxygenated water. So that way I don't end up with any real anaerobic issues and then that way those solids continue to break down. Um, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but that's one of the designs I want. If that doesn't work, I might just turn this into like a moving bio, -fed, um, bio bed filter. So I might get either some of the like the grow stone, these little, this GS1 grow stone would actually work really well for that because it does float. Or um, bio balls would be another thing because they actually sink a little bit. And then I can use, put a um, like an 8 inch air stone in the bottom of here to really get the air moving throughout here um, and that way I can basically turn this so I have a combination swirl and um, moving uh, media bed filter um, and I'll kind of play around with those um, not quite sure if that's really something I want to do or not but 
it might be an option. That's kind of why I leave this kind of open. The swirl filters to get the bulk of the solids. This is basically for me to be able to play around. I'd really love to incorporate a mineralization tank into this, so it's kind of an all-in-one kind of filter. Um, and unfortunately, I had a little bit of bad news today. I was actually hunting for a IBC tote, and unfortunately, the guy that did have one um, ended up selling his. So I do have to wait for it, but the plan is to put an IBC tote basically here. Um, I don't exactly have enough space, so I'll have to shift everything a little bit, which will suck because these guys, roughly you're talking about nine pounds per gallon. Call this 100 gallons of water. Uh, this is on the upwards of about 900 pounds of water just between these two tanks. So I could drain these and then move them and stuff like that, but I really don't want to do that. I should be able to just shimmy these over. Um, the big thing question is whether or not I can move all of this without anything coming across, basically apart. But that's kind of my plan. I want to shift everything that way enough that I can get a four foot by four foot IBC tank right here. So that way it just fits just inside where the garage door closes. So that way I'll have an IBC tank here that I'll be able to expand and to use as a grow out tank. Or also to kind of future proof this a little bit and allow me to grow bigger fishes. Because I don't plan on actually eating my tilapia. Um, I just chose them because they're so hardy and they are relatively cold water tolerant. Um, so I will probably do that. Um, one of the things I am looking into is whether or not I want to do koi. Um, koi is actually something I want to do. However, koi get really big. So if I can't find a valuable market in our area, I'm not going to bother with koi. Because I want to be able to find someone that I can basically raise the fish and sell them to. Which requires a little bit of permits on my side, but not much. Um, and that way I can then sell them to um, like local pet shops and things like that for people for their ponds. And that would be really great because I can also grow some really big ones so you wouldn't just be able to get like the little like four inchers that people get and stuff like that. I could get some really big ones. Um, and I think that might be an asset to this area. But I don't, I, I need to look with a couple of um, local like pet shops and like, some of the aquarium shops and some of like the tropical fish shops and stuff that we have in our area. Because at one point I actually discussed this with one of the owners of a fish shop that was out here. Um, unfortunately the fish shop closed up. But that was originally what we were going to do when I was going to start on the system almost about a year ago. There was a fish shop, I was going to do koi, and I was going to kind of go from there. And I was going to raise like two foot long koi for the guy, like at least one foot long, potentially up to as big as two foot long koi that he could come in and basically have as a really cool like showpiece. So he was going to have a really cool um, custom built like 500 gallon aquarium um, in like the center of his area and we were going to load koi into it. And that way I would be able to grow those out for him and be able to do that and use that for my hydroponic system, um, for my aquaponic system, sorry. Um, but that kind of failed. Uh, that kind of went under because his shop ended up closing. Um, basically the landlord where he was jacked up his rent and he couldn't afford to do it anymore. So that's kind of where that landed. Um, it kind of sucks. But so at the very least I'm doing tilapia for now. Um, I want to do some sort of ornamental fish, but I, I want to get at least a grow out tank. I want to get a bigger tank in here so that when these tilapia get too big, I'll be able to do that. So what I might do is I might end up, uh, after I get a bigger tank in here, I'll move like the babies in there. I'm going to kind of like fine tune my filtering on here and I might just use this as kind of like a fingerling tank. So this will be my little itty bitty baby tank and then I'll have an IBC tank and I might even have a couple of these. These little 55 gallon tanks work really well for fish. So I might be able to actually like expand on these um, and really push these, push the limits of this. Um, I haven't quite decided, but I am in the market for uh, some IBCs again. Um, I did find a couple. The closest one that I found so far um, that might fit my uh, needs is a little bit far from me, but I, it's still within my driving range and what I can do to even rent a truck if I had to. However, the biggest issue that I'm going to run into is it's not actually technically food grade. Um, it held a, it's a 270 uh, 5 gallon IBC tote. He's got a couple of them, but they held fish, uh, not fish, um, sorry, uh, kids paint, washable paint. So it's at least non-toxic, so I don't have to worry about that. But that is a problem that I'm going to have to deal with. Is Because I mean, I could clean those out pretty well, but that's still something i got to deal with. Uh, the pea plants are still climbing along. Just like they want to. That one's still kind of like hesitant to climb. I need to train it a little bit better. 
but that one's taken on really well and it's starting to climb so I'll have to get some supplemental lighting in for that eventually I'm gonna probably get some uh I have some four foot t5s that I was gonna experiment with and I might just hang one just completely dedicated to that plant along those lines and be able to do that so but that's this is my day 34 update this is just kind of a quick update on like where things are I know this ran along again and I apologize um, I use these honestly to kind of like process through some of my thoughts too and kind of put some things on paper and get people's input on stuff. Um, sometimes some of my videos they don't really get review, uh, views right now and that kind of sucks. But this is honestly mostly for me which is why I do it. Um, this is my way to kind of chronicle my journey as I'm going through with this system and that way I can go back and look and see okay what worked, what didn't work and be able to have a nice little record and go hey look this worked, this w didn't work or hey, I really wasn't able to implement it as I wanted, but if I tweak this a little bit more, I might be able to get it to work better again, and kind of go from that. So, um, again, this is my day 34 update, and this is just kind of the status of the system right now. Um, so, thank you.